Ready whenever you are. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Counter Culture Podcast. We are live at the Rogue Invitational. We're not actually live right We're now, not. by the way. Oh, no, no. oh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I just like keep saying that because I feel like it's just easier to say that than be like, we're at the Rogue Invitational. It's interview number yeah. 372. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. But yeah, we're live at the Rogue. Yeah. yeah. So we are here with Allie Loves Lifting. Yes. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? I say hello here or here. Hello? You can look hello. at me. You can look Hi. at the camera, whatever you want to do. I'm doing good. I'm hot and sweaty and I'm waving at my friend Rod who got me into all this mess. Yeah. Um, but no, we're having a good time. He's been a he's been a treat. He's hooked us up with so many people. No, we're super he's appreciative. Super good guy. Yeah, yeah, great guy. So I got a question for you. What do you think about Roman's performance out there on the field? Oh, I think he brought it. Like my favorite part was when he did the CrossFit workout. Yeah. It was great because he like he was there yeah. physically and then he was gone and, and then it was like whoa he did like some workout stuff <laughs> yeah i think there was a moment when he threw his shirt and we were all just like wow yeah and yeah. he was sweating and it was cool yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so just for reference and i'm just gonna put it out there i don't really know much about what's going on out there because i haven't been able to see anything yeah. so yeah dude um okay you have a you have a funny page a really funny I instagram page i try have you always been funny? That's probably oh. a question that you get a lot. Uh, I, I mean, I think I feel like if I say, yeah, I've always been hilarious, like I come across, <laughs> or, or if I try to be humble, like, oh, no, am I really? Then it's like, oh, okay. Have you always um, been Allie Loves Lifting? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I was homeschooled for the most part growing up. Wow. Um, and then I was also raised, like, a, like, strictly religious, and I was a middle child. So, like, in my mind, those, like, were the breeding grounds of just being super fucking awkward. Yeah. Like, when you grow up. And yeah. And then I was just like... Well, you know, I have all these funny ideas. Let me put them on videos. I started on TikTok, and my TikTok got really big. How, wait, how long ago um, did you start social media? Uh, gosh, like two years ago. Wow. Okay, so you've like, grown I mean, like I had quicker. private accounts, like yeah. most people, but I started on TikTok, and I got up to about 72, 73,000 followers. But then TikTok like shifted and got weird, and I don't know. So I was like, well, let me try it on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, the CrossFit community is actually a lot bigger on Instagram than TikTok. Like, I don't know if it's an age thing or what. But. Yeah, probably. Um, let's go into the homeschool thing because <laughs> <laughs> I I actually, so by my day job is training people. I own a gym. Okay. So I work with a lot of athletes that want to go like NAIA schools or D1, whatever. But I've worked with a lot of baseball kids and they're homeschooled. Like a ton of them are homeschooled. Yeah. And I have found it is kind of a trend that some of them are either like overtly extroverted yeah. or super introverted. Yeah. You had that effect, but it was like introverted? Or it was, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I went to elementary school like normal. Um, yeah. And then my parents pulled us out uh, when I was like in the middle of middle school. So, I mean, I'd had some normal socialization, but like it was literally just me and my sisters at the house. So like my parents were still working. So we would just like be in our jammies, listening to Dave Matthews, just like whatever. And this was before the freaking internet, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so like you had to mail in your tests. So we would just vibe like all day, yeah. And it would be like mail in our tests and like there was no people around. There's no one so, to like, supervise. So we just sort of like had to entertain ourselves. Like there was no PE, no like nothing, so. That is kind of like a breeding ground though too for like being creative and yeah. learning how to make each other laugh. Like you don't have like a whole group of people in a classroom right. where you can feed off of each other, yeah? yeah? Well, even now, homeschooling is so different. They have, um, like, groups of people who are homeschooled. So they have, like, activities where, like, you and other kids in the community can do stuff. Yeah. And they didn't have that, like, for us. So we just sort of just had to entertain ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. How close in age are all of your siblings? Uh, we're, like, two years each direction. So I have a two-year-old si older sister and younger sister. Sweet, yeah. dude. Cool. Were you involved in, like, public sports growing up? Oh, no, no. No? So again, my parents were super religious. Um, they were a part of an organization where everybody just sort of just hung out with each other. Mm, Scientology? Um, uh, no, oh. they were Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, okay. Um, and so basically like we just weren't a part of like sports or dances or anything. We only hung out with people that were in the same organization. So we got a lot of socialization, just not a lot of like public out in the world kind of socialization are you still jehovah witness i am not you're not I'm so okay i'm super interested in that yeah. when when did you like start to get a glimpse of like 
the like, world. Just FYI, you're the first person that's ever been allowed to ask me about this. So I want you to like feel this moment <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Are we allowed it's, to talk about no, this? No, absolutely. Okay, okay, but okay, like, cool. but like it's because, because I still have a lot of respect for the religion. I still have a lot yeah, of respect yeah. for the people. And a lot of times when you start telling people, oh, I was raised Jehovah's Witness, they want to start cracking the knock, knock jokes and they want to start. Um, and I got like, no, by the way, I have no issue with yeah. any religion or any, Yeah. however people express their spirituality is none of my business. Exactly. You do whatever Everybody's you want. Everybody's got their own choice. Yeah. Um, what was your question though? Um, when was, when, when did you like start to get a glimpse of like the, the outward world, the outside world? Yes. So, um, I was married before and just, it just wasn't for me. Okay. That, that's all it was. It just, the whole life wasn't for me. So I ended up, it's like, once you leave, like you leave, it's kind of like the Amish, like you leave. Um, was that because though that you saw how people lived outside of that community? Not at all. I just didn't want to be married anymore. Okay. Um, and they take marriage very seriously as yeah. they should. Yeah. Um, and so when you decide to get a divorce, when there's no like grounds for it in their mind, like biblically, biblically, um, they sort of, you know, separate themselves, which is absolutely fine. That's how yeah. they protect themselves from people who, you know, encourage them to do things they don't want to do. Right. So I ended up like moving in with my dad, who was a Marine, um, 27 years. He lived in Opelika, Alabama. Um, and that was like my first taste of like the world. Yeah. So I was like 24, 25. Wow. And I'd never like not been a part of that so i got screwed over a lot yeah because i just believed right like, what people told me you because you didn't you didn't have any other experience before. Yeah. yeah so i got a lot of a lot of life lessons like real soon <laughs> after that yeah at 24 years old yeah. that's crazy no it was wow. crazy so how what is it like like actually integrating into i, I don't want to say the real world but i don't really have but another yeah, it really term is. yeah I mean, um, at such like at 24 years old it that's, was actually like it's horrible because people are really mean <laughs> <laughs> okay and they're just like uh, the the really bad people can smell out the really vulnerable people and I yeah. think that's what it was and that's one of the things I appreciated growing up the way I did was because it was such a safe and nurturing community of people um, but I had to learn like when I left like when somebody like the guy that I dated and ended up marrying after that like would tell me all kinds of stuff and I would just believe it Mm. Like he told me he was part of the CIA and like he used to like be an assassin and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you were an assassin. That's crazy. Oh like God. not what, like somebody says that to me now and I'm like, yeah, right. Go. Come yeah. on, come on, take it. <laughs> yeah. But back then it's like, why would he lie? Yeah. You know, and I ended up marrying him, but yeah. uh, that was, that was a crazy ride. Are you still with the CIA? Uh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, he, he went off the, off the rails a little bit. Um, but he basically like convinced me that he had just like led this life of whatever and that like he always so everywhere we went for like three years we were married everywhere we went he would like look over his shoulder like he was committed to this role was it a role well you said he went off the rails a little bit Are you, was it like a role or do you think he was like no going he was off like, like bananas he was yeah. absolutely bananas i came home like i'd been trying he like, i can't believe you're not listening to this. <laughs> we uh so i had been trying to leave for a while because yeah. like he was fucking crazy um and when did then, you realize that that he was crazy um, so a couple of things we went through, we went through the CIA thing. Okay. Um, then I found he had set up like multiple dating websites. Um, and when I found out he was like, oh, I do that for my self esteem. I do that to make myself feel better. And I believed it. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, that's terrible. But I mean, I guess you have to do what you got to do. Wow. It makes me want to vomit okay. now. Um, and then he would just like, just do stuff like that all the time. Just like make things up. And then, uh, one day I came home and he was carving my initials in bullets. And I was like, uh, uh, let's let's talk about this. Oh my Yeah, because I've been trying to leave, and he would not like get out of the house. Yeah. He was like, "I'll get out of the house if you buy me a camper." So, so I spent ten grand, bought, bought him a camper, camper, and he had taken a bunch of Ambien. And I came home, and he was like carving in and out. And I called his parents. I was like, "Bro, y'all got to come get this, bro. I can't. No, I'm done." So okay. wait, he so so he knew that you were trying to leave. Yeah. The yeah. entire time. What was? Wow, I have a lot of questions. I don't know how deep you want to go <laughs> you into this. You did not even know what you were doing no, when you asked no. me out here. Roderick's this like, Roderick's like, we got <laughs> this funny girl. Alley. She's one of my friends. And I'm like now talking about yeah. the schizophrenic CIA agent guy. Well, and the funny thing is like, I don't talk about this stuff on my page because yeah. it's all comedy. It's all yeah, lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. I try not to like bring people down. You know, like you try not to post like sad, crazy stuff on there because yeah. people come to your page for happiness. But like that it's shit happen. Like it is what it is. What was it though when so you come from like a sheltered yeah. childhood for you know lack of better terms 
you're in this relationship. What is the moment that you, the switch flip and you're like, this is fucking crazy. I got to get out of this. And that's when you start to leave. Uh, I mean, before that, I was just trying to calmly um, because he wasn't well. Like, he wasn't well. And I genuinely, I don't, like, think he ever meant to be a bad guy. I think he just had his Sounds own like he had set of issues. serious mental health issues. And he just wasn't getting the help he needed. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't really know that there was an exact moment. I just knew that I needed to be out. And I didn't realize it was, like, a dangerous situation yeah. until that. But, like, I was, like, going to therapy. And he was like, I'm going to go to the same therapist as you. And then the next visit, my therapist was like, yeah, you need to leave that dude. And I was wow. like, why? And he goes, I can't legally tell you why, but you don't you need to be to. there anymore. So I went home and I was like, what the heck happened? And he's like, oh, I just went in there and told him all the reasons why I think you're bipolar. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. You walk into my therapist's office with like a list of reasons why I'm bipolar. I'm not bipolar, by the way, now that there's anything wrong I, with I, that. Yeah, no, no. But, but I it can, was just yeah. like, by at that point, I was like, okay, we're... This, this is it. This is Holy it. cow. Yeah. yeah, not that there would be anything wrong if you were no, bipolar, but not at all. wow, that's. But it was such an odd experience. That's but a yeah, wild his parents ride. Came and, came and got him. and. Wow. It that's. Was, yeah. Coming from that sheltered childhood into yeah. that, that's a wild ride. But it was like going through, you know, all like the years of education in yeah. like three years. So. Yeah. Every, after that, the problem was I didn't trust anybody. Yeah. I was like, you're going to have to prove exactly what you're saying to me. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. What, yeah. So. Coming out of all that too, what's it like like navigating social circles and trying to find friends and Um so I went a long time uh bouncing from different friend groups to different friend group and I was never able to really because especially all the people you were raised with and all the people you were that were no longer in your life and you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Um it was really hard because you don't really know who you are. Yeah. And if you don't know who you are, you can't genuinely connect with people. Right. So I sort of just kind of floated around until I found CrossFit, honestly. Okay. Um, and then made some really good friends. And now I just, I keep my group small. Like I love everybody. I'll hang out, I'll chill. But when it comes to like heart to heart, like I have a very few select people. Yeah, that's probably better that yeah. way, right? Yeah. yeah. So you would say CrossFit kind of helped you find your own, figure out who you were and all that? Yeah, CrossFit, um, I mean, just like any avenue of fitness, it's got its pros and cons. Yep. Like, I know a lot of uh, people will comment on my videos about how they went to a CrossFit gym and people were, like, super rude to them. And it's like, you know, that's one gym. That's not CrossFit. That's one class. Yeah. Like, um, and so I think, you know, you walk into the facility, getting out of it what you put into it. So yeah, um, I'm a part of a, an amazing community now. I coach there. Uh, the owner's great. Everybody's just super nice. Yeah. yeah. How how important was it finding like a community that you could integrate yourself into after coming from Jehovah's Witness? Um, I mean, I bounced around a couple of the facilities to find the right fit. Um, I'm not a super competitive person. Yeah. Um, and I don't mind if it's a competitive CrossFit gym by any means. Right. But when people start attacking each other over Wattify scores or the open scores or when they're like, Talking about who's sleeping with who, I'm like, I'm out. I don't yeah, really care. You don't want the drama. I don't give a yeah. shit. Like, yeah, I, I always thought that was funny because I coached like super part time in exchange for a membership at a CrossFit gym for a little bit. And then people would be like, they cut, you know, or like people would come yeah. up to me after class and she, the, a, a specific girl would be like, so and so cut her reps short by 11. There's no way she beat me. Like, I'm but like, how are you sitting yeah. there counting them, bro? Like, what? Are and I'm you also <laughs> like, why do you give a shit? Yeah, like, like, who cares? You're not like, but people actually, do. Right. It's they not like you're do. trying to get on a podium today, yeah. you know? Like, it doesn't yeah. matter. That's, that's wild to me mm -hmm. that people concern themselves so much with it. But so, how do you get into actually doing the social media stuff? Uh, so, I actually was uh, running in Anytime Fitness. I'd been coaching CrossFit for a while, um, and no offense to CrossFit, but it just doesn't pay very yeah, well. Doesn't at all. As a coach, no. doesn't yeah. pay very well. Um, so, I had been approached a couple times by the owner of the Anytime Fitness in my town to, to run his gym. Um, and I turned him down a bunch of times because I was like, a Globo gym? Oh. Oh, yuck. Well, I'd <laughs> you rather have air die. conditioning? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, can't take your shirt off. What is that? Uh, <laughs> but he finally named a price that I was like, look, I got to take care of me. Yeah. So uh, I managed his facility for three years and actually was geared up to buy it from him. Wow. Um, and I started doing social media on the side as like a side gig. Yeah. Um, and started making funny videos as like a gym manager. You know, cool. it was that's how I started out on TikTok. And then it just kind of went from there. And then. Did the video start popping like as you were the manager? No, you really have to study how these platforms work. Like yeah. 
right now, um, TikTok and Instagram are nothing like they were two years ago or even six months ago. Okay. So TikTok now is like, it wants more original content. It wants more like day-to-day -day life people. Mm. Whereas before I could get on there and just do funny sounds and funny skits mm -hmm. and it would blow up. We're talking like 50, 60,000 views. Wow. Now I average like 2,000 views. On TikTok? Yep. Wow, okay. Yeah, because they, they want people to get on there and like do something completely different. And I don't have time for that. Right. Like, I don't care enough. Yeah. And then with Instagram, it blew up. But now, I mean, Rod will tell you, they've changed the way they roll things out. So like our videos would, let's say they got 30,000 views. 5,000 of those views were new people, mm -hmm. which is how you get new followers. Yeah. They're doing it. They're, it's like 100 now out of 30,000. You get 100 views for... So we don't really know why Instagram's not pushing our content to new traffic, but in like two months, it'll change again. Yeah. And then you'll just have to adapt again. You just right? got to keep rolling with it. What was the first video for you that like popped off via uh, TikTok and Instagram? So my very first video that went viral was, um, have you guys seen Shit's Creek? I've you know never. Creek is? You seen Shit's Creek? Okay. So it's this. You got to watch it. It's honestly the most funny like, thing on the planet. But yeah. there's this scene where the mom and the son are cooking and they're trying to figure out they're for they're like from this hoity toity family. They don't have to do anything. Yeah. And they're trying to figure out what fold in the cheese means. OK. Like fold in the cheese. Yeah. So anyways, I took that sound and I applied it to when you're trying to teach somebody how to snatch. Yeah. And it got like two million views off the wow. bat. Yeah. And Crazy. then from there, like a couple of them popped off, like a bunch of CrossFit gyms, like reshared it. Yeah. A uh, big moment for me a few months ago was CrossFit actually reached out a couple times and was like, hey, can we share your video Sweet. on our page? And I was yeah. like, yeah. Um, but then I made a video making fun of some CrossFit stuff. And they haven't asked me since. Oh, so, no. <laughs> John warned me about that. He was like, yeah, just no. What'd you do? Uh, I had made fun about them choosing Fort Worth, Texas for the games. Um, yeah, <laughs> they so, didn't like that. I don't know, but they haven't asked me since. So, so if you're watching have... this, I still love you. Please come back. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> I miss you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that feeling like when you get that first viral video? Do you feel like is it like a high? You have to go chase it again. You're like, oh shit, oh, I gotta figure horrible. this out again. It's absolutely horrible. Yeah? As a content creator, uh, when a video goes viral, like viral, uh, it brings a lot of hate and it brings a lot of uh, trolling. Yeah. Um, because as a content creator, you want people that are that are genuinely going to find value you with your content. You, yeah. that, you want them to find you. Mm -hmm. um, so even if you only get 20 followers in a month, if those 20 followers love you, that's enough. But if you're getting people coming after you about, oh, CrossFit's stupid, you guys can't do pull-ups, that's like their one argument. You guys can't the do pull-ups. The kipping pull-ups pull thing? Dude, it's their one thing, and so yeah. uh, it's. I honestly don't enjoy it when things go viral. I would rather get like twenty thousand views and have it go to the right people. So you're a person that reads the comments. I I do sometimes. Yeah. Like you you can't read them all sometimes. Um, I've only ever had to turn the comments off on one video. Yeah. Because I like people. Like I have the freedom to post what I want. People have the freedom to say what they want. Yeah. Um, but I had to turn the comments off on one video because. Dudes, y'all be wild. Y'all be wild. Probably not you. Probably not you because you look like a really nice guy. Well, thank you. But these Appreciate dudes that. in the comments, it was literally, I was at a CrossFit gym. This was like forever ago. Yeah. Um, and this girl was over by herself doing her own thing. She was trying to work on kipping pull-ups. And this coach like went up to her and put his hands on her without asking, like one on her back, one on her stomach, uh, and like no. lifted her. Yeah. And she like really freaked out. So I pulled him aside and I was like, hey, like, I know you didn't mean anything by it, but you got to ask ladies, yeah, like, men and women, you got to ask before you put your hands on somebody. Sure. Um, and I made a video about it and it was just all it said was men and women, coaches, da, da, da. If you are coaching somebody new, like if you've been coaching them for like a year and they've already said, yeah, like you have a relationship like, with them. But yeah. like if you're going up to somebody new, you cannot grab them like this. Yeah. These, these gentlemen. Say it. Say it. We're like. Yeah. You women are always trying to be a victim. You're always trying to make a scene. You're always trying to do this. You're always trying to do that. And then all the women in the comments were like, thank you. Thank you for saying something. Yeah. And it was like, why? I really did not think that a video about consent would be this. Like, I had to turn the comments off because it was, like, affecting me mentally. Yeah. Because it was just like, whatever. But any, but any coach knows, like, for the most part, you don't. You got to ask. Yeah. I feel like just... 
people no matter what like even the people who like claim to be far right yeah. like you guys are softer they're they yeah. also have their spots where they're super fucking soft too where it's like mm -hmm. they're taking the time out of their day to comment on your video yeah. about like a woman maybe not being comfortable or a guy not being comfortable right. with somebody touching them and it's like especially if it's geared towards everybody mm -hmm. it's like dude yeah that goes without saying oh yeah fucking ask the person oh no i had people like unfollowing me left and right oh well, they, we didn't think this was the kind of content you made fucker it's my page i yeah. can make whatever content whatever you i want, want. like if you don't like it just fucking it fuck was, off it was it was it was really uh it was really crazy honestly i had people like messaging me from fake accounts telling me i should kill myself like it was oh yeah it got real whoa um but, you know, that's what... That's got to be really tough to deal with. When you have a public page. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I think for men and women, like a male-run page versus a female-run page, I think we get different types of hate, weird comments, but yeah. it comes with a package. We get a lot of, like, uh, comments about feet on our page. Really? Yeah. I actually had a guy uh, message me and ask if he could pay for a bag of my poop. Did you um, say Well, yes? I, I was like... Like how much? Yeah, because it could be my dog's poop. <laughs> it could, like my dog's shit all day long. Like, yeah, done. Just send it. Uh, but no, I just deleted it. I was like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. You hear some weird. There's some just weirdos. Like, like I don't judge. Yeah. i if you if you but kink shame you can't kink shame, but you can still think it's weird, right? right? Like yourself, like. We have a video that went, I don't know, not viral, but it's on YouTube. It's got like almost 11K views on it now, mm -hmm. which is good for us. Yeah. And uh, the comments on it are like, yeah, girl, good toe wiggles and stuff. Like commenting on the mobility of her, her toes or like Aaliyah Miller's feet yeah. and stuff. And we're like, what the fuck? Is that like we're, a thing? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. People, and then somebody DM'd her asking if she would send a picture of yeah, her feet yeah. or a video of her wiggling her toes oh, for yeah. money. We're like, I don't know. Like, there's a whole, there are whole pages for that. I yeah. feel like they can, yeah. But Absolutely. I'd be like, all right, how, what, what are we talking? Like, I mean. <laughs> 20 grand. 20, uh, look, name your, it is what it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, you get asked, you get asked some weird, weird stuff. Um, but you just learn to ignore it, honestly. So aside from like the, the interesting comments that you would get, the, you know, the bad comments. Yeah. What is that? What is the feeling like, like, chasing that again like are you trying to make content to keep up with that view count again or is it like you're just gonna make shit that you like and hopefully it does the same thing or in the beginning is it like no i have to try to mimic that formula and get it again it's honestly the most frustrating thing on the planet because you want to it's like the with eight stages of grief you you want some days i'm like i just want to make what i want to make i want to make what i think is funny i want to make what you know and then it doesn't do well and you're like well yeah. shit they didn't think it was funny maybe i need to do better and then you like get in your head about it and you know i was going to the gym for like two three hours a day just trying to create like the most amazing content and then honestly the videos that i spent the least amount of time on yeah. did great yeah. you know so now it's my rule is if i can't make a video that i want to make in 30 minutes or less it wasn't meant to be it just wasn't meant to be yeah, it's almost like the, when you think too hard about it, it just doesn't yeah. come off like genuine or... Because I do this for fun. Yeah. Like, I, I am not trying to do this professionally. Like, I've done a couple brand deals, and honestly, it made me so stressed. <laughs> really? Because, yeah, no, I've done a couple brand, and it's just like, it's like, well, what if this video doesn't do well? Well, what if they don't get any sales? <laughs> They're going to think I'm a failure. I just want to make people laugh. They're going to cut me off. Yeah, so it's it's... I just I just want to make people laugh. That's it. Yeah. The end. That's all. Only That's cool. I do so it. it's not it's not so much about the viewership anymore. No, I just want to make people laugh. And honestly, when you're a when you're stuck to what the platforms will do, like to what how they will roll things out, and it's really frustrating when you're doing the same thing you've been doing that was so successful like mm. two months ago. Yeah. And now it's like, what are you doing? And there's literally nothing you can do about it. It's it makes you not want to do it anymore. Yeah, you can't get caught up in that if the yeah. algorithms and stuff are changing yeah. so much. It sucks because some people are doing this for their job too, yeah. right? Like some people just make an income based off of this and then it's like if Instagram doesn't keep the algo the same or they don't update creators yeah. on how to like keep They're going making viral it really hard for yeah. content creators if you don't pay them. So they're always mean? trying to like prompt you to like boost your posts or boost your stories or pay us money and right now they're oh. like prioritizing people that are doing that um there's a lot of that in this space right now oh like, yeah like content creators like you guys that have to boost their posts they're, where they're asking you to like boost your posts you don't they don't ask you to boost your posts that's what I, that's what i was saying so, yeah yeah oh, wow. so like if you don't play the game they're like oh well we're gonna mess with your views then wow that's yeah wow. and like right now 
So for instance, when you used to get on Instagram, you'd see the same 50 to 100 people, the ones that you engage with the most. Yeah. And that's why our content was doing so great because we would post a video and all the people that engage with us regularly automatically liking and commenting on it. Mm -hmm. And so it gets pushed. Now, Instagram is rolling it out to just random people that have started following you that don't really like engage with you. Yeah. And it's slowing things down. Like if you get on Instagram huh. now, you're going to see all these new people and be like, who the heck is this? Yeah. Well, because it's about like getting the engagement right. And then yeah. it boosts you in the algorithm type thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's annoying. And it's just like, I'm, I'm so tired of thinking about it. Honestly. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. So, okay. You said that you just want to make people laugh. Yeah. Where does that want come from? Um, I think that, uh, there is just, there's a lot of sadness in the world. There's a lot of moments where people feel like they're alone and how they feel and how they do things. Um, and myself, I feel it all the time. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a lot of crap on social media. There's just yeah. a lot of just bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Bull and I just wanted a place where people could go to just feel happy. Like. That's Let me cool. go to Allie's page and see a funny video and feel better about things, which is why no matter where I am in life, no matter how, like if I'm depressed or sad or having a bad day, I do not put it on my page. Okay. Like that is just not what that page is for. I just deal with it in my own life with my own like family and stuff, but I don't put it on my page. Wow. That's, yeah. I mean, that's really cool yeah, that, you're, that you're like that. Thank yeah. you. So do you, do you engage with all your followers, like DMs, everything? You just try to I be try. there? Yeah. I mean, it's I'm not going to lie. I only engage with the females. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, How are we doing it? it's not that, it's not that I, uh, that I have anything against men. Like I've been called a man hater. I'm, I'm married. Like I'm very happily married. And, yeah. uh, in my opinion, like I, I'm not trying to open up any avenues of conversation. So like. If somebody that's a male sends me something, I'll be like, oh, thank you or whatever. But if they keep trying to continue, like, I don't, like, that's not what I'm about. So you respect your um, guy. Yeah. So like John from Make Wads and, and Rod from Memes for Time, like I, they're, they're good friends. Yeah. But they're both very like respectful of me and, and the people in their lives. So yeah. um, for the most part, the females, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No offense, dudes. Like, please keep following me. I hope you're happy. But like. It is what it is. I'm yeah. too feministy, right? Well, I think that's good. I mean, you respect your relationship and yeah. you don't want anybody to think that there's some sort of weird chance that they yeah. could slide in and do Well, do people all that. get they get really weird about the fact that my husband's not over all over my social media. I get asked daily like Are you married? You're married? Are you happily married? Like does your husband Are you I, happily look, married? I hate that question. Yeah. Like if I said no, what does that mean for yeah, you? Right, right. Um, I I decided a long time ago that when I took this page public and I started doing all this stuff, uh, my husband is an extremely private person. Extremely private. And he hates social media. So he's not out there on social like no, you. He has like a woodworker page, like with just like his stuff. But um, he doesn't want to be on mine. Like I don't want to go against his privacy. When we are together and we are spending time together, my phone is not on. Like that's work for me. Yeah. When I have my phone on and I'm taking pictures. So it's it's crazy how people think if you don't post your spouse all the time that you're not happily married. It's like, no, it's the opposite. You know? Well, it, yeah, I mean, it's like it's like any business, right? Yeah. Like she's not going to be the front of my gym, right? you know, like all the time and like I can't make it like like if I'm training people, I can't be like hugging on her and kissing her and right. you know, shit exactly. because it's the business, it's the brand and mm -hmm. you got to protect it. So yeah, I totally get that. And I respect that hundred yeah. percent. That's awesome. Is, um, he's okay with all the content that you make. Oh yeah. He is. I mean, he hates CrossFit. <laughs> does he? <laughs> oh Why? God, he hates it so much. Does he, does he fitness? Uh, he is, does he, he does like more like bodybuilding, okay. uh, like type powerlifting workouts or yeah. whatever, which is why he thought, uh, Rod's newest videos were hilarious. Um, <laughs> Because we love to make fun of each other. Yeah. Like I, I have a lot of bodybuilder, powerlifting friends, and we just shit on each other yeah. all the time. Um, do they make fun of you for the kidding oh, pull-up? all the time. Do you ever ask them to do two? Yeah, they can't. They can't. They yeah. absolutely can't. <laughs> um, but no, he uh, he thinks he doesn't get half of it because he doesn't do CrossFit. But sure. he's one of those people. He's do what makes you happy. I don't care. That's so do cool. It. Full That's send. That's great, dude. Yeah. Yeah, full send it. Is this what you do for work? No. This is not your job? No, so I actually own a social media marketing company. Yeah. Okay, so you you so get I do it, this get for it. a yeah, living. So you do this, yeah. But I do it for other people. So for myself, cool. that's more me just like blowing off steam and having fun. 
Um, but I, I work for about 20 different companies, 40 platforms, wow. like 50 hours a week. How did you get in that? I don't know. Because of this? Like I got, no, I just, yeah, well, yeah, I was doing well on TikTok. When I first started out, like I didn't know shit about fuck. Like yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I made yeah. every mistake possible, but it's one of those things like you either have it or you don't. Yeah. Like you can take every class, you can go to school, but like you either have it or you don't. And the it is knowing how people think, mm -hmm. knowing what makes people stop, knowing what makes people entertained. Or, and if you don't have that, if you don't know people or sales, because that's what you're doing with social media, you're selling yourself, Yeah. then you can post templates. <laughs> Uh-oh, you got an accident. You can, you can post templates and dry graphics all day long and it's not gonna get you anywhere. You need somebody that knows how to push what you need to push. I Yeah, I mean, I totally agree what when you first started that were people coming to you or is it like a byproduct you were like oh i know how to do this now i'm gonna go out and try to sell this service that i learned for myself to other people um so i was geared up to buy that anytime fitness like got the loan you know we were talking terms and then i woke up one day and it was just that's not what i wanted i didn't want to own a brick and mortar um yeah. it's tough i didn't want to own an anytime fitness like yeah. I just, it just, to me, you don't get rich off one gym. I don't care what you guys think. If somebody owns one gym, CrossFit or not, like they are not rich. <laughs> I own a, I own a gym and I can confirm. Yeah, they are not rich. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but people think you are because you own a gym and it's yeah. like, no. Yeah. People think um, that about any business. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I, like I said, I've been doing a little bit of the social media. So I had already, already had my business license and insurance and LLC and everything was done. So I just had to shift it. And I was like, let me give it a shot. And like within two weeks, I had five clients. Wow. Um, local businesses? Local businesses. Cool. And then uh, it's a year and a half later now, and uh, like it's it's been a it's been a ride. What's that hustle like? How are you? How did you initially try to like find clients or? Get I really into didn't have to do too hard because I was already like well known in the community. Okay. Uh, because of being in fitness, yeah. like I everybody knew like we knew each other so uh i is just that started mostly who you work with is fitness brands no, oh no but i but people just knew who like went to the gym sure. um and i just i just posted advertised um i actually have a work page um that where i give people free content advice and that's really a, where i grew a lot of of my of my following on that page was people who can't afford to hire a social yeah. media marketing company um, I teach them how to do it on their own. That's um, cool. I've gotten a lot of clients off my personal page. I bet. Because that's my first question when someone's like, hey, I follow you. I'm like, which page? <laughs> I you know, and six. I have an opportunity to work with a political figure coming up here soon um, for the Georgia area. And I was, wow. I, I literally had to be like, hey, I need you to go look at my personal page. Just make sure you're cool with that. Yeah. Because like when you're in politics, like, you got to be out and open about everything. And I don't want someone to be like, oh, your social media marketing team is going to fuck up my brand. A penis pillow. And <laughs> <laughs> you should be concerned about that. So she looked at it and she's like, no, this is hilarious. And I'm That's like, all awesome. right. How did that opportunity come up? Somebody who knew me knew her. And, and they were just like, yo, yeah. work together. Yeah. That's really cool. Is there any like added pressure on you? Do you feel any I'm type terrified. of way? I'm terrified. I'm absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I, I, it's going to open so many doors. Yeah. Um, for me, but with that particular type of campaign, there's a lot of rules. Like you gotta mm -hmm. learn, like Facebook, Instagram, all of them have their own set of community standards and rules and what you're allowed to post. So I got a lot of work to do. It sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, Absolutely. Work. What's what's like the, the biggest thing that you're afraid of in that in that realm? Um, I really have zero fears with okay. my business. Um, I mean, working with the political. Oh, that? Um, yeah. Uh, Nothing? No. Cool. Uh, I'm very confident in, in my job. Like, I'm very confident yeah. in what I do. I'm very professional. Um, Good. And just the whole process of, like, how I create content. And, like, they're able to view it, make changes. We collaborate. Like, I'm not just, like, free balling, you know, putting shit on their page. Like, it's, yeah. a, it's a whole process. Cool, dude. Well, hey, I'm super happy for you. That's yeah. a, that sounds amazing. No, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, dude. And I know we, we said like 45 minutes, so I'm gonna let you go here so you can go view all the, the events and stuff. But I have three questions that I ask everybody at the end of it. Oh God. Is that cool? Sure. They're all about CrossFit. Oh, well, about that's competing. okay. I was like, we have no secrets. I've just told you my entire yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all, right, name, all right, tell me all your CrossFit questions. So what is um your biggest goal for the next year? 
in you CrossFit had in specifically. No, I'm just fucking with you about the CrossFit Dude, I thing. I don't know. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. Oh my God. For, for your personal life, your business, your social media, it could, whatever your biggest goal is uh, for next year. My biggest goal is to be happy. Nice. I don't give a shit about anything else. All right. As long as I'm happy, my family's taken care of, my friends are taken care of. I don't need to be famous. I don't need to get bigger. I don't need anything. Like I just, I just want to be able to live my life and be happy. Cool. Honestly. I love that. Yeah. These two other questions may be totally irrelevant. What are you willing to sacrifice to to be happy? Uh, I'm willing to sacrifice everything. Yeah. Like if my husband woke up one day and was like, I, I need you to shut your page down. I think it's something that's going to affect our relationship. I'd shut it down. Like you can't, social media is, it's, it's fake. Yeah. It's fake. It's, uh, we have a great time and there's a lot of good that can be done with it. Mm -hmm. But if your whole life is wrapped up in that one page, that platform can take your page down tomorrow just yeah. because they want to. Right. And then what are you going to do? Yeah, it's not permanent. It's not permanent. So you have to, people need to put their phones down and focus on making real memories and spending real time in the world um, and give up whatever they have to to yeah. make that happen. That's so cool, dude. I love that answer. Yeah. What are you not willing to sacrifice for that? I'm not willing to sacrifice my mental health. Yeah. I absolutely, like, if, if I go th through a period of time where I'm not okay, um, I'm not going to force myself to get on my Instagram and pretend like I'm okay. It'll be just, I don't post anything that day. Like it is what it is. Uh, I, you have to take care of yourself. I love that. Do you post every day by the way? Uh, maybe like five days a week. Okay. Uh, sometimes cool. I will post like more in my stories than my, um, my videos. It just depends. Nice. Videos are easy cool. to make cause I do, um, I batch them. Like yeah. I batch a bunch, and so I just roll them out. Sweet. Well, hey, keep it up. You're making a bunch of people laugh. You're making people happy, and uh, I can really, really appreciate that. So thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, like, subscribe, comment, do all the things, and uh, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Thanks, dude. Bye.